autonomous cars make people nervous. That's why we're here with Waymo, which launched a commercial taxi service with driverless cars here in the greater Phoenix area. We're here to find out how they get regular riders to feel comfortable in cars that are being driven by computers. Waymo, Google's autonomous rideshare program, has been shuttling passengers around the Phoenix area since 2017. Although most of these minivans have safety drivers, those drivers are instructed not to talk to riders in order to simulate what a driverless car would really be like. According to a AAA survey, three out of four Americans are afraid of driverless cars. So Waymo doesn't just have to prove their technology is safe for public roads, but they also have to get people comfortable with the idea of sitting in a car that drives itself. One rider we talked to, who has been using Waymo since the pilot began, put it pretty simply. It's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to describe. It's probably like the first time you're in an airplane that, that like, you're like, okay, like this thing is like driving itself and I have no real control over anything if it goes wrong, but this is pretty cool. Um, and so uh, that's why they like airplane. It's the best analogy. He's got a point. People have gotten used to the fact that planes are mostly flown by computers. I thought it was time to see for myself if I could feel as comfortable in a driverless car as I do in a plane. To learn more about how Waymo plans to do this, I took a ride with their director of product management. All right. So we're in the Waymo. Now, tell, now I've got the screen in front yeah. of me. Uh, tell me about how you've thought through this experience here. Totally. So what uh, you can see is that there is uh, on the screen, which is naturally what your eyes focus on. So we noticed where users look first time when they get in, and they often look into the screen. But there's also a hardware button, physical button here as well, and it matches uh, you know, uh, the UI here as well. You can start, and you can see, hopefully see the similar design language all through. And the information it's showing you is where you're going, roughly the right duration, the estimated time of drop-off, and whenever you're ready, let's just hit start right. All right. Please remember to buckle your seatbelt. So let's focus on the rider experience yeah, right now. Totally. Uh, because in you know some Waymo cars right now, not this one, we have a safety driver, but other yeah. ones are operating without a safety driver. That's right. Um, in those cars, there's no human here. It's a totally different experience for the rider. So what have you done inside the car here to get people not only comfortable but familiar with that experience. Totally. So in fact, that little chime that you heard, a reminder for seatbelt, for example, when there is a Waymo driver, in theory, you could have relied on that to do that. <laughs> but over time, we're trying to see, okay, are, is the car itself self-sufficient to be doing all the things that we would like to communicate with the rider? There's also the, uh, uh, the rider support button here, here, in the screen as well as in your app so that any moment if you wanted to speak to a human you can immediately be connected and they can help you through whatever questions you may have. And that human is back in the warehouse. Uh, where right, in, in multiple locations but yes uh, they, and they, they will know the exact location of your car and any questions that you may have they will um, be prepared to answer that for you. Uh, similarly, um, very unnatural, but say you, for whatever reason you needed the car to pull over and you hit that button it would pull over whenever it's safe to next, uh, next to do so. At what stage of the Waymo development did you guys zero in on needing a screen like this showing all the, showing what the car is seeing essentially mm -hmm. as a key part of the rider experience? Great question and, and actually that has gone through many generations as well of iteration based on the feedback. Around April 2017 when we started the early rider program that's the first time when we truly started getting a good stream of feedback. We had a version of this already back then because we knew that was one of the key questions and key surfaces with which people build trust with the car when they see oh, yes the car is seen right. everything around it then a big question was how much detail to give them because the laser is of course seeing far far greater amounts than this right. and that amount would be overwhelming for the rider so there was a lot of experimentation and thinking about okay just how much information is enough so for example even if we see the precise contour of these cars we just show a yellow box because you know people can understand oh I'm referring to that car whereas for a pedestrian we choose to show their full uh, you know contour and you can see here the cross mark has been laid out as well precisely so that explains why we chose to stop precisely here which maybe if you were the driver you would more uh, normally understand but this I noticed is like, that the uh, outline of the pedestrian yes. here includes the umbrella that woman is holding yes which is yes. pretty 
And that was a conscious choice that in pedestrians we want to show more detail, but in cars just showing them block is more than enough information. And yeah. then we fade it as well, because keeping all of that data would be overwhelming. And what, once in a, after some time, you, you know, the key information that you care about is always there. How, long, how far are you off where you headed? You can all zoom out of all this and claim your space and have your music that we have integrated here as well, or right. just... So if you want, if you don't want, if yes. you become accustomed to the experience exactly. and you don't want to see all that yeah. road chaos, yeah. you can yeah, check exactly. out of it. During my test drive on a route Waymo chose, it seemed obvious that the most important thing Waymo can do to get people comfortable with self-driving cars is to have the cars drive well. All the fancy screens and pleasant chimes in the world wouldn't relax me if the car was out of control. So you've got all of these Waymo cars out on the road. You've got all the data these sensors are collecting yep. in real life, but that's only a tiny portion of how you guys educate the Waymo driver, so to put it. Um, what are some of the other ways you use? Certainly. So first of all, just to put the current driving in context, we have 10 million plus miles uh, together. Each day, that's 25,000 miles plus today. That's like saying you have two years worth of driving experience in every single day on just real world driving. Furthermore, over the years, we have uh, invested in tremendous simulation capability and infrastructure. So we can make an easy situation hard or a hard situation really, really hard. Or we can uh, ch add a bicyclist to this whole equation to make it even challenging. So the constantly the car, which has already 10 billion miles of simulation, is not only learning from 10 billion normal miles, it's learning from much more adversarial cases that we're able to construct in simulation. Now from the car's perspective, I think with humans here, it's simulation testing. Yeah. It sounds not real, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but from the Waymo driver's perspective, from the computer's perspective, um, is that, are those simulation miles treated any differently than when it's driving out on a road in the real world? I mean, the realism part is a very legitimate part and a lot of the sophistication of why it's not possible to create the simulator in a year and why it took us a decade to get, is to make it ad adversarial, but in a real way. We have sort of uh, simulated things like, what if this, uh, so we have noticed motorcyclists exceeding the speed limit by say 20 miles an hour. We ask ourselves the question in simulation, what if they were going 40 miles per hour higher, 50 miles? And right. some of these things, you test in simulation and you become robust towards it. And, and then when that situation occurs in real life, you are completely confident that you will be doing well. Um, then in structure, uh, in, the, in the closed circuit testing, we have tested things like, I don't know if you have heard this thing called coffining. Believe it or not, it's a real thing. It's people trying to get beneath the tires of your cars on a skateboard or something. I'm not an expert on that, <laughs> but that's the kind of thing it's better to test on a closed circuit. Yeah. And those become simulations and we make sure we have confidence on those as well. According to Waymo, I'm not the only one who has settled into a driverless car future far more easily than expected. It takes even less than a ride, actually. So you can see the first few minutes they are looking around, seeing how's the car driving, right. uh, checking out this UI. But most people within uh, most people within less than a ride, and some people by their second ride just chill back. You can even see them in their body language. And some, you know, my best compliment is when somebody falls asleep, because that you know by that time they have trusted the car enough that yet this will take. You know, uh, so that's the transition we see for the first ride. They're checking their surroundings. They're checking what the screen is telling them. But very soon they uh, begin to hang back and take, uh, which is our own whole mission, this should feel like your third space. So instead of uh, you having the onus of driving, the ride that you're taking should be your time back. I don't know if self-driving cars will be normal anytime soon. I don't even know if I want that. But I can at least get behind the idea that we should feel comfortable enough to fall asleep in them. And that future doesn't seem too far away. You know, you'd see a Waymo, it was almost like a celebrity sort of thing. People were like, oh, oh, there's someone, they're getting out of a Waymo. Like, and, uh, and so that was like, uh, that was kind of cool. And then you step out and everyone is doing And then, who's that? Who's yeah. that? And it's like, I'm nobody. Hey, nice to see you, you know? Like. <laughs>